بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear students, Assalamu alaikum This is the 10th lecture of numerical analysis And today lecture is about the claimed cubic splines using the system of equations if you remember, I told you at the very beginning of the splines that there are, we will be discussing two types of splines. One is the natural or free boundary splines, and the second will be the claim splines. In claimed splines, the condition on the first derivative has been used. So, in the last lecture, I talked about the natural or free boundary splines. And the same case I will be discussing for the claimed splines. So the target is to construct the claimed cubic spline S of x for the function f. This function f is defined on this interval from a to b. And I divided the interval from a to b into n number of sub-intervals by x0, x1, xn. Let's consider the set of data points are x0, f of x1, uh, x0, x1, f of x1, up to xn, f of xn. In other words, there are n plus 1 number of data points. So if there are n plus 1 number of data points, so we can construct n number of Splines. Spline between these two, I will denote that by S0. Spline between these two, I will denote by S1 and so on. Spline between xn minus 1, f of xn minus 1, and xn, f of xn, that will be defined by Sn minus 1. And generally, I will say the spline like this. I am not going for further detail because I discussed this in detail in the last lecture. So, uh, I am sure that you, you, you already have uh, learned about the previous lecture. So, this is the idea that there are n number of splines for n plus 1 number of data points. Again, here we are applying the condition of the definition of the cubic splines. So, uh, again, this is the same as we discussed in the last class. This is the uh, first condition. The first condition of the splines. And this is coming from, as I discussed in the last lecture, that we define an extra spline between this point and the point which is not known. And if you remember, I told you that we can't compute this spline completely, but just I'm using this for my own purpose. Since uh, uh, this spline passes through this point, so it will satisfy this this uh, this point. And when I replace x by x n, I should get f of x n. When I replace x by x n, so this becomes zero. I'm getting a n, and this will be equal to f s n x n is equal to f of x n. So it is coming from there. Since I need this in the construction, that's the reason I, I use this spline, which I will drop at the end of the lecture. Step size is discussed earlier. These are the uh, values of BJs and DJs. And this is the main system. As I discussed before, okay, these uh, three equations are coming from the five conditions of the definition of the spline and the uh, that has been derived in the book also, and I explained in the last lecture, so I'm not going for further detail here. The only thing here will be, uh, in that case, I discuss the natural spline, where second order derivative of S0 was 0 at X0, and second order derivative of Sn minus 1 at the point xn was equal to zero, which we discussed. But this time, in case of claimed spline, the situation is different. This is the first condition, and you can see that the derivative of s0 at x0 is equal to a prime of x0. It means that this is a, a given quantity. 
this will be given to us if not given inshallah in the coming lectures we will be talking about the derivative of the function at the data point so you can compute it from there also if it is not given if this is the case so you can see that this is the value of s naught uh, prime in other words i differentiated this one so differentiate this will be bj plus 2cj into x minus xj plus 3dj into x minus xj square and i substituted j by z so that's the the derivative you are getting now uh, let's uh, replace x by x naught over here when we replace x by x naught we are getting b naught because this portion becomes zero so i can see that b naught is equal to a prime of x naught but remember if, if you uh, look at the last lecture so i'm focusing on the values of c i's only because i am developing a system for the computation of c j's only so that's why i have to get it, get rid of this b naught how i will do it let's uh, replace j by zero in this expression which is already given to you and you can see that you b j is in terms of c i's and a i's a i's are known from here c i's we are be computing from here so let us uh, replace j by zero in this equation so we have one over h naught a one minus a naught minus h naught divided by three two c naught plus c one which is there is equal to a prime of x naught so you can see that this is equation in terms of c i's and we eliminated b naught so this is coming from the first condition of the claimed splines you can see this is the equation which we got and when we simplify this equation we can get this equation so you can see i multiplied both side by 3 3 divided by h naught a1 minus a naught is there and uh, this has been shifted to this portion and this has been shifted to that one that's the reason there is a, a prime of x naught since i multiplied both sides by three so three is there in numerator similarly three will be in multiple of this one so now if you look at this equation this equation is in terms of c naught and c1 which we were looking for we don't hit we don't have bj and we don't have dj now let's come to the second condition second condition of the claimed spline is s n minus one prime at x n is equal to a prime of x n now look at the uh again this is the derivative of s n minus one spline exactly in the same fashion as we discussed for s naught now let's replace x by x n over here so what we are getting we will be getting b n minus one 2c n minus 1 x n minus x n minus 1 this is equal to h of n minus 1 multiply by c n minus 1 which is coming there similarly uh, if i replace x by x n so this will be x n minus x n minus 1 which is h n minus 1 so there is square so i can see square is there multiply by d n minus 1 so this portion is coming from when you replace x by x n and remember x n minus x n minus 1 is equal to h n minus 1 which you saw in the previous slide again if you look at this equation we are focusing on c i's only b is there and similarly d is there so let us uh, eliminate these two and you know that the value of b j and d j so i replaced in the previous slide b j j by n minus 1 so this is the value of b n minus 1 which is using over here and similarly if you look at this one d j is equal to this multiply both sides by 3 h j and replace j by n minus 1 so you can see 3 h n minus 1 d n minus 1 is equal to this quantity so i know the value f i a separate h n from here i know its value from these two equations so let us substitute the equation the values of the equation so you can see this value is coming here 
this is the value of bn minus this value is there plus 2hn minus 1 cn minus 1 plus hn multiply by 3 hn d uh, hn minus 1 dn minus 1 so i substituted the value from here in terms of ci so you can see this is the value it's equal to a prime of xn and if you look at this equation this is totally in terms of the known quantities these are known quantities again this is the derivative of the function uh, uh, at the endpoint xn Again, this will be given or you will be in the position to find out. Let us uh, rearrange this one. So what I did, multiplied both sides by 3 and shifted this portion. I shifted this portion containing C to the other side. You can see it over here. So this minus sign will become plus. This term is there. This term is there. Minus this will become 6 and this will become 3 multiply by this term i multiplied by 3 so you can see 3 is there and similarly 3 is there in multiple of prime of x n so if you look at this equation this is totally in terms of ci's which are unknown quantities and these are known quantities let's uh, simplify this one and if you simplify this one you can see 2 h n minus 1 c n minus 1 minus 6 that will become minus 4 and minus and minus is plus minus 4 plus uh, 3 is equal to 1 so you can see it is there and similarly minus uh, 3hn minus 1cn and hn minus 1cn gives you minus 2hncn but i have taken negative sign common and uh, multiplied both sides by negative sign so that's the reason i'm writing positive here i'm writing positive here and if you look at it this minus uh, become plus now and this will become minus now if you look at this equation this is coming from the second boundary condition if prime is uh, uh, prime and minus one x n is equal to a prime x n and totally in terms of cic which we were looking for that's the change from the natural splines this equation and this equation they have been changed and the rest of the equations are the same so this is the equation used in the previous case but this is the at the first boundary uh, uh the left hand boundary and this is at the right hand boundary so the only change occur in first row and last row of the system and rest is the same now you can see this portion this portion is the same as we discuss in natural splines it's coming from this equation so i'm not going for its explanation again uh, look at them again and uh, in case of any problem you can write to me and I can answer to you now let's go to the first equation the coefficient this was for C0 C1 C2 up to Cn so you can see coefficient of C0 is 2H0 which is there coefficient of C1 is H0 which is there and the rest of the coefficients are the same so you can see R R0 and similarly the last boundary, the coefficient of Cn is 2Hn minus 1 and you can see it is there. And similarly the coefficient of Cn minus 1 is Hn minus 1 which is there because this column is for Cn and this is for Cn minus 1. So you, you constructed the coefficient matrix, it's the same except the first and the last row. The rest of the rows are the same is in case of the natural splines similarly uh, these are unknowns i told you this c naught c1 up to cn so you can see that uh, this is the column matrix this is the column matrix and you can see that it's a uh, far uh, c i's and uh, this is the matrix b now if you look at matrix b it's uh, coming from where 
Remember, this portion is the same as we discussed in case of natural spline. The only change occur in first and last one. First is coming from there. This is the right hand side of the first equation. So you can see it is written over there. And similarly, this is the uh, value corresponding to the last equation, the right hand side of the last equation, which you can see over here. So you constructed the, 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 uh, the system e x is equal to b and from here you can write x is equal to e inverse b so you can see that only these two columns are these two rows are different these two rows are different and rest is the same as you did in case of the natural spline so i'm not discussing them again let's uh, consider an example I'm taking the same example as did in previous case, but this time the splines will be claimed splines. So construct the claim cubic splines for the given data. So if you look at the data, the data is the same as we did in case of natural splines. But remember this time, uh, the derivative of the function at minus one and derivative of the function at 0 0.5 will be known. Now this is x0, x1, x2 and x3. The value of n is equal to 3 in this case. The same kind of matrix 4 by 4 matrix will be because we need to find out c0, c1, c2 and c3. So we need a 4 by 4 system for the construction of, for the construction of G. So let's see, this is normal, uh, the splines are normally given in this form. Uh, but if you look at it, uh, uh, J starting from 0 reaching up to N minus 1. In this case, the value of N is 3, so this is 2 minus 1. How it is 3? X0, X1, X2, X. 3, so 3 is the value of n, so it reaches up to 2. So you need 3 splines. Spline between the first two points is given by this expression, x minus minus 1. That's the reason you can see x plus 1 in this expression, and the value of j is equal to 0 in the spline, general splines. In case of the spline between uh, minus 0 0.5 and 0 is given by this one. The initial point at minus 0 0.5. That's the reason this is plus. X minus minus 0 0.5 gives you plus. And similarly, the situation is for the rest terms. Now, the spline between 0 and 0 0.5. And this interval is defined by this quantity. You can see the value of a j is equal to 2 in this spline and x j this time x j is your x2 and x2 is given by 0. So that's the reason x minus 0, x minus 0 square, x minus 0 cube. That's the spline. The same as we did before. The value of n is equal to 2 as I told you and the distance between this number and this number yeah, this number and this number, yeah, this number and this number is 0 0.5. So again, the data is equally space data. First of all, let's find out the values of a j. So replace x by minus 1. So you are getting a naught, a naught is equal to s naught of x naught. x naught is minus 1. So you can see that a naught is given by, this is a, uh, the previous conditions which I discussed. So the value of a naught is given by this quantity when you replace x by minus 0 0.5. So this will become 0, you will left with a1 and a1 is equal to s1 at the point minus 0 0.5. And f of minus 0 0.5 is given by this quantity. This is the value of a1. And when j is equal to 2, so you are getting a2. a2 is there. 
because this portion will become zero when you replace x by x2 and x2 in your data is zero. So this portion becomes zero. You left with a2, a2 is equal to s280 and s280 is given by this quantity. Similarly, if j is equal to 3, so a3 is equal to f of x3, f of x3 is f of 0 0.5, which is given by this quantity, because you know that in this case, in this construction of this spline, we need a3, a is with a c3, so that's the reason I am computing a3. How this has been computed that I discussed before. Uh, we computed the values of A0, A1, A2. Now let's go for the system. X0 is minus 1, X1 is minus 0 0.5, X2 is 0 and X3 is 0 0.5. And this was the last equation, if you remember. But remember this time the value of J, the value of N is equal to 3. The value of n is equal to 3. So this was the main scheme. Uh, the matrix we will be getting, the coefficient matrix, the C matrix and the B matrix, which will come uh, right now. But here I use the claimed boundary condition. Remember, these are different conditions now. What you are saying, you are saying that S0, 8x0 is equal to F prime 8x0. This is the value f prime 8x0. And this is the value 8 uh, uh, f prime 8x3. In other words, f prime 8 0.5. These are the conditions. These are the equations which we derived before. So when I substitute the value h0, h1 and h2 are 0 0.5. So when you substitute it over here, you are getting 2 multiplied 0 0.5 which is equal to 1. So you can see 1c0 and h0 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 c1. That is the value and uh, sorry, this is now the value of uh, f prime of xn. This is this complete value. This is the value of the right hand side. So I, I computed the complete answer from here. And similarly, when hn minus 1, in this case your n is 2. Your n is n is 3. So this is h2. The value of h2 is 0 0.5. Uh, this will be uh, c2. So 0 0.5 into c2, 0 0.5 into c2, you can see over here. Similarly, 0 0.5 is the value of h2, h2 multiplied by 2 is 0 0.5. So you can see 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 is equal to 1. So you can see 1, c3 there. And uh, if you compute this value, if you compute this value, so this is given by 0 0.1810. So this is the coefficient matrix is in previous case. These are the unknown C0, C1, C2, C3. We are looking for the values of these unknowns. This is the same matrix as we discussed in case of natural spline and how you can get it. But remember, this time the situation is uh, different because these were the conditions 2H0. This is the first equation. And similarly, uh, there was h2 hn minus 1 n is 3 so 2 h2 and this was hn minus 1 n is uh, 3 so this is h2 the difference is uh, uh, is the of the first row and the last row which uh, i discuss right now it's coming from there if this is the case This is the value of B, the same is in case of natural spline except this condition which is coming from here and this condition which is coming from here when you replace n by n by 3 so you are getting this value. So that's the difference between the natural and the claimed splines. Now the value of H0 as I told you is given by. Remember this equation I got from here. 
But if you look at it, this is a 2HC0. 2HC0, 2H0 is there. Similarly, H0. So H0 is there. And if you look at it, N is equal to 3. This is a H2. H2 is there. This is a 2H2. So 2H2 is there. Uh, the right hand side, this right hand side uh, appears in uh, the entries of B and uh, this entry appears in the entries of B in the first row corresponding to the first equation. Now when you replace H0 by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 is equal to 1. This is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is uh, 1, 1 multiplied by 2 is 2, so you can see 2 here, and this is again a 0 0.5, which you can see here. Similarly, H1 is 0 0.5, which is there. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1, multiplied by 2 is equal to 2, which appears here, and this is a H2, 0 0.5, which you can see here. H2, which is 0 0.5, you can see here, and 2 H2, 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 1, which you can see over here. C0, C1, C2, C3, and B. Uh, this is coming from this calculation. You, you know that the value of A0, A1, A2, A3 are known as we computed in the last slide. So we can compute these values, the value of H0, H1, and H2, that is 0 0.5. Similarly, uh, F prime of X0 is known quantity. It is known quantity and uh, 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 this is also known quantity as I told you before that in the next uh, 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 coming lectures we will be in the position to compute a prime of x0 from this data. So you can see if you go to the divided differences case. So f of x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0 gives you derivative to 8 minus 1, which I have used here. And similarly, uh, f of x3 minus f of x2 divided by x3 minus x2. f of x3 is known, f of x2 is known. So when you substitute the value that gives you the derivative to 8x3 and uh, the derivative to 8x3 is using here. So I have used value from there. I have computed from there f of x3 minus f of x2 divided by x3 minus x2 if you use the backward difference. So that is coming from the divided differences uh, if you remember. So you can find out this is the uh, the last entry of the uh, first divided difference that's the derivative 8x3 and similarly the first entry of the first divided difference that is the derivative at x is equal to minus 1 and I have used it over here. So you are getting these two values are the same is coming from here and this is the same is in case of natural splines but remember this entry and this entry changes similarly this row and that row changes. Now you can see this is the case e x is equal to b. Ax is a x is equal to b and x is equal to a inverse b and of course you can find out the inverse this is a smart matrix so you can find out the solution and when you compute the solution this is the solution of uh, the system a x is equal to b so this is the value of x naught this is the value of uh, sorry this is the value of uh, c naught this is the value of c1 this is the value of c2 and this is the value of c3 in other words we have computed all these values or uh, i can write this in this form this is the value of c naught value of c1 value of c2 and value of c3 this was the target to find out the values of CIs and once we compute the values of CIs, the rest of the values can be obtained from the formula which is given to us. This was the formula, if you remember, this is the formula and of course this formula will be given to you in the paper. Uh, so when you substitute J is equal to 0, B0, A0, A1 and H0. C0, C1, C0, C1, and A0, A1 are known quantities, and when you substitute the values in this expression, you are getting the value of B0.
Now let's substitute j is equal to 1. When you substitute j is equal to 1, 1 over h1, a2 minus a1 minus h1 divided by 3, 2 c1 plus c2. c1, c2 are known from here a1, a2 are known, h1 is known. So when you compute this value, this is the value of b1. Remember in this calculation, I just wrote the up to four decimal places, just for convenience. Similarly, when you substitute j is equal to 2, so you are getting 1 over h2, a3 minus a2 minus h2 divided by 3, 2c2 plus c3, Value of A2, A3, H2, C2, C3, they are known. So when you substitute the values, you got the values of B, J's. And you can see in your splines, B, J's are the coefficients of X minus X, J. The only thing remain is, remaining is a D, J. So let's find out the values of D, J. This is the formula. Again, this was the formula given and that will be given to you also. And when you replace j by 0, so this is 1 over 3 h naught c1 minus c naught c naught c1 h naught. They are known quantities and when you substitute the values, you end up with the value of d naught. Similarly, when you replace j by 1, this will be 1 over 3 h1 c2 minus c1, c1, c2 and h1, these are already known quantities, substitute the values and this is the value of d1. Similarly, j is equal to 2, 1 over 3 h2, c3 minus c2 and c2, c3, h2 are known quantities. When you substitute the values, you, get, you are getting the value of d2. Now you can see that you computed all the values. These are the splines. Let's uh, compute the splines now. All these uh, uh, constants are known now and their values are given by A0 we computed in the very first stage, BIs we computed and CIs we computed from the, the, the matrix AX is equal to B, DIs are these values. Let us now let us substitute the values in, in these three splines. You can see A0, A0 is there, B0, B0 is there, multiply by x plus 1, <coughs> plus a C0, C0 is this value, you can see it over here, multiply by x plus, uh, uh, sorry, this is, this is 1. This is one. Uh, so C naught, C naught is there, multiply by x plus one whole square. Similarly, D naught, the value of D naught is here, 0 0.016, multiply by x plus one whole cube. And similarly, the second spline, the value of A1 is this value. You can see over here the value of B1. The value of B1 is uh, there, 2, 3, 2, 7. X plus 0 0.5 plus uh, <coughs> C1. The value of C1 is 0 0.0894, which you can see over here. And X plus uh, 0 0.5 whole square plus uh, this is the value of uh, D1 and D1 is 0 0.0150 multiply by X plus 0 0.5 whole cube. And similarly, uh, the value of A2, let's substitute the value in this expression A2, the value of A2 is uh, known to you, which is uh, this value. The value of B2 is uh, known, this is the value, which you can see over here. The value of C2 is there, which is uh, written over here, and the value of D2 is here, so you can see that you got uh, the value of, and uh, this should be plus sign, 
uh, this is correct so this should be this should be plus sign this should be plus sign so you got the splines but remember this uh, time if you compare this with the previous splines so they are different from this one because here we have used the claimed spline in that case we use the natural splines so remember we replace the data using the natural splines and uh, now let's see that if you are looking for the integration if you are looking for the integration in this case so <coughs> integration from minus 1 to integration from minus 1 to plus 1 uh, from minus uh, 1 to 0 0.5 uh, integration of s is having three components is one is uh, is not is one is two is not is between minus 1 and minus 0 0.5 s1 is between minus 0 0.5 and 0 and S2 is between 0 and 0 0.5. So we split it the integration according to the idea of calculus. Now the value of S0 is given to you. This is the value of S0. Just do the integration. Integration is straightforward. Its integration is given by this expression. So multiply by x. This multiply by x plus 1 whole square divided by 2. Uh, x plus, of course, this is, a, uh, this is 1 as I told you before. This is one. So we just uh, uh, did the integration, and its integration will be. I don't know from where this x five is coming. So not x five, but you can see it's uh, uh, th this five is not there. This five is not there. This is uh, x plus one whole square divided by two, and similarly, this is uh, x plus one whole cube divided by three. This is x plus one whole four divided by divided by four. This five is not there. So we did the integration. Now let's uh, apply the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. So again, uh, you can do it it's straightforward. So the value of the first integration is given by this value. Similarly, integration of the second, uh, this integration, the value of S1 is given by this expression. And let's do the integration. When we do the integration, this number multiply by x, this number multiply by x plus 0 0.5 square divided by 2 plus this number multiplied by x plus 0 0.5 whole cube divided by 3 plus uh, this number multiplied by x plus 0 0.5 whole less to power 4 divided by 4 and again upper limit minus the lower limit you are getting this integration so this is the value of the second integration now let's come to the third integration s2 f of x from 0 to 0 0.5 this is the value of s2 and uh, when you do the integration you are getting this number multiplied by x this number multiplied by x square divided by 2 this number multiplied by x cube divided by 3 this number multiplied by x4 divided by 4 which you can see over here and if you apply the limits upper limit minus the lower limit so you can see that this is the answer of your third integration and total integration is the sum of the three integrations which is given by this expression and if you plot your splines this is the curve for the splines which you got right now and this is the area under this curve yeah i will say this region the area of this region 
So what you did in this case, you use the different conditions from that of the natural spline, you need the claimed spline, claimed spline is not prime at x0 is f prime of x0, is n minus 1 prime at xn is equal to a prime of xn. And you saw that in a similar fashion, we replace the data by uh, by a smooth and continuous curve and then you computed area under the curve between minus 1 and 0 0.5. So the area of this region is given by 1.56123. Remember condition used are different so therefore uh, there will be change a slight ch in the change in the equations and definitely change in the values maybe too. Let's consider another example. Again, this is an example from your book. It says that uh, let's assume claimed splines are given to you. These are the claimed splines given to you between uh, uh, this is one, between one and three. Between one and three, you are having this is one. And the question is, uh, splines are claimed splines. Find out the values of A, B, C, and D. These are the unknown quantities. But you are given a condition. Uh, derivatives at uh, 1 and 3 are not given to you. But this relation is given to you. You have to use this relation. Again, if you look at this one, if you look at this one in this case, you can see that x lies between 1 and 2. 2 is not included. Very, very close to 2, but not exactly equal to 2. That's why I am not using S1, A2 exactly. But I can use limiting value because you will be approaching from left hand side. So very, very close to 2. And from right hand side, you can use the second spline, but you can use the exact value also. So let's see the condition. Continuity of the spline when you are approaching from left hand side, so that's the equation. When you are approaching from right hand, right hand side, so this is the equation. So left hand side uh, uh, limit from through smaller values of s1 is equal to through larger values. In this case, the function is s2 and should be equal to the exact value. The exact value is 2 of 2 is equal to f of 2. So if this is the case, so let's uh, look at the values. You can look at this equation, no denominator, no problem. So just replace x by 2. So this will be 3 plus 2 minus 1. 3 plus 2 minus 1 is equal to, this will become 0 at x is equal to 2. You are left with a and you can find out the value of a from here. 5 minus 1 is 4. So you can see this value. Similarly, use the condition of the derivative of the spline. So again, you can use left-hand derivative, you can use for right-hand derivative, you can use its derivative and should be equal to the exact value. I told you that in case of splines, splines, their first order derivative, second order derivative are continuous. That's the condition of the spline. So look at the derivative. Its derivative is 3 plus 4 into x minus 1 minus 3 into x minus 1 square. Its derivative is a b plus 2c into x minus 2 plus 3d into x minus 2 whole square, which you can see over here. Again, I don't have any de denominator uh, for uh, limit through negative values. I can replace x by 2. So let's replace x by 2. You are getting 3 plus 4 minus 3 is equal to this will become 0 you are getting b and you got the value of b which is uh, 3 and 3 will cancel the value of b is equal to 4. Now let's uh, come to the condition of the second derivative. Second derivative left hand limit 
when x approaches 2 through negative values, right hand limit when x approaches 2 through positive values. So you have to use this for limit, uh, for left hand limit, you have to use this for right hand limit, and you can use exact value because you are seeing that uh, second order derivative is continuous. So limiting value must be equal to the exact value, and you can find out the exact value because in this case x is equal to 2 is included. Now let's take the second order derivative of this. Second order derivative of this is 4 minus 6 into x minus 1. And this will be 2c plus 6d into x minus 2, which you can see over here. Again, I don't have any problem with this one. No indeterminate form, so just replace x by 2 here. So you are getting the value. Uh, this will be 4 minus 6. And uh, this will become 0, you are getting 2c, so 4 minus 6 is minus 2, minus 2 is equal to 2c, so c is equal to minus 1. So I have computed the value of a, b and c. The value of d is remaining. I use the continuity condition for this spline, for its derivative, for its second order derivative, so I don't have the continuity conditions anymore. Uh, but there is a one condition which is given to us. And let's think about it, how I can use this relation. Remember your spline is claimed spline. So claimed spline, you will have the conditions. S1 prime at 1 should be equal to a prime at 1. And S2 prime at 3 is equal to a prime of 3. But you are given the condition. The conditions are that a prime at 1 is equal to a prime at 3. So this side is this is equal to this one. So the left hand side will match automatically. So I can see uh, I just substituted a prime at 1 which is, is 1 prime at 1 and s prime f prime at 3 is equal to s2 prime at 3. So I have substituted its value and again you know about the first order derivative uh, as I showed you in the previous slide. So just uh, replace x by 1. So you can see that uh, this will become a 0. You will left with you you will left with 3. This will become <coughs> 0. This will become 0. And uh, when you replace x by 3 here, so you are getting b plus 2c into 3 minus 2 is 1. So 2c you can see here. 3 minus uh, uh, 2, which is 1, so you can see 3d over there. Uh, the value of b is known, the value of c is known, b is 4, c is equal to minus 1. So this is a 4 minus 2, which uh, 4 minus 2 is 2, uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, so you can see that d is equal to 1 divided by 3. And you computed the values of the unknown constants which appears in the given splines. So you can see in this case also is like the uh, natural splines. Uh, if the claimed splines are given to you, then you can find out uh, the values of the constants which are not known in the splines. So when you uh, substitute the values of A, B, C, D in the given splines, so uh, that will that will be the required splines. And remember, if you plot S1 between 1 and 2 and S2 between 2 and 3, then you should get uh, a, a continuous uh, curve. And that is the construction of the claimed splines. So I'm sure that uh, everything will be clear. In case of any problem, remember with every lecture I am sending you uh, a link and if you uh, write your problem in the given lecture, so that come to me automatically when you submit it, they come to me automatically and then normally I am trying to answer to your uh, queries uh, through email. So remember, uh, queries related to the lecture. What is the what is the point which is not clear to you? So I will be happy to answer to them. Uh, please uh, uh, do the uh, do here to your lectures, and uh, because uh, as I told you, uh, we will be trying to wind up your lectures in the uh, up to 
10th July and uh, if uh, uh, the situation become uh, feasible and when you are coming back to the institution, so in the first week, you will be expecting your final examinations. So don't put each and everything on the last day because that will not be possible for you. So I'm sure that you will go through these lectures and uh, will try to understand each and everything. Thank you very much.